Hey Internet, my name's Amy, and while my laundry finishes drying, I thought it'd be a good opportunity to answer my friend's uh, Alexis and Faye's Women in Machine Challenge question this month, which was, how did you get started racing and into cars? And since I want to start, you know, video logging all of my racing shenanigans this year, it'd be a good start to kind of explain how I got here. Um... So when I was younger, I was really an adrenaline junkie. I liked going fast. Anything that I could get my hands on that would, you know, get speed, whether it be snowboarding or skateboarding or biking, anything um, I loved. And cars always were kind of a fascination of mine. I liked, you know, because of going fast, I wanted, I liked cars. And my dad was kind of a do-it-yourself do kind of guy where um, he'd be doing oil changes or brake pads. And I would always try to find a way to be in the garage with him. So I started to learn kind of the basics of how cars went together. And then in the year between my uh, sophomore and junior year of high school, I was flipping through channels on TV and I found this airing of the World Rally Championship. And there was this blue and yellow car that was just killing it and, you know, tearing through all the, the off-roads and... I, I was immediately, I fell in love. Um, and I found out later that this was the Subaru, which was really cool to me because what was going to be my first car was my dad's uh, 1996 Subaru Impreza base model, but it was it was the same kind of car, so I was really excited. Um, and true to form, slightly got myself into trouble with that car and ended up totaling it because I was trying to chase my friend on a very twisty back road by our high school. Oops. And my dad basically said, you know, you need to get another car. Um, you know, you're in charge of replacing it. So I went online and I found another 96 Impreza that needed some work. So I, you know, tore apart the one that I totaled and I put parts on to the other one and then I was sort of a little um, influenced by Fast and the Furious so I did paint racing stripes on it which would be why I call most of my stuff Stripes Racing because that was my nickname in high school. I had racing stripes on my car. It happened. But I never really knew anything about racing aside from, you know, the World Tra Rally Championship and NASCAR. You know, it was never something that I thought I could do. So once I uh, graduated, I started working and I knew I wanted a 2004 STI. That was, that was my dream car. That was what I wanted. And I saved up money and I found one uh, close by and I bought it and... It was the best day of my life. I was so happy. I think I, from the time I bought it, I drove it around for like 14 hours, filled up the tank of gas twice. Like it was, I, you couldn't have torn me out of that car and I loved it. So for about three weeks, everything was awesome. And then um, one day I was driving around and massive cloud of smoke out the back and found that the turbo had blown. And so I, you know, took everything apart, ordered a new turbo, and then went online to try to see who's who in tuning and whatnot, because I knew I had to do that. Um, and everyone pointed me towards EFI Logics in Bethel, Connecticut. So I showed up there and they checked the car out because they didn't really like how it sounded. And the oil pressure was a little low, so they suggested bringing the car home instead of tuning it that day and fixing the oil pickup. So I did that. And as soon as I took off the oil pan, it was just filled with glittery, shiny metal. And I called EFI and told them this, and they said, well, if it was one of our cars, they would have torn it down, torn the engine down, seen what was actually happening. Well, I had just bought the car, so I really didn't have money to get a new engine. So I decided to just, you know, 
change the oil, button everything back up, and drive, baby the car essentially, um, until I could figure out what I wanted to do. And then a little while later, the engine blew up. Or the turbo blew up, or some combination of both. So at that point, I gave up on trying to fix it myself, and threw it on a trailer, and sent it off to EFI. And the engine builder took the engine apart and coined the term. It was the biggest rot box he had ever seen. So basically everything in the engine was unusable. So I had a choice whether to just let that car go, learn experience, waste money, or try to, you know, spend money fixing it. So that's what I did. I got a new engine, new block, new heads, cams, valves, headers, new turbo, new everything. And by the end of the winter, I had a 365 wheel horsepower, 365 wheel torque STI that was so much fun. And that was a lot of power for the street. Well, luckily, uh, EFI was running three wheel-to-wheel -wheel, uh, cars in NASA, and they invited me to try these things called HPD track days. And I thought, hmm, you know, that, that sounds fun, that could be a thing. And I really didn't think anything of it. I bought a cheap helmet, I bought a cheap pair of gloves, and went out for my first track day, and I had no idea what to expect. So I showed up at the track and met my instructor and went out on track and I was immediately hooked. From the first session I knew that this was what I needed to do for the rest of my life. So I signed up for more track days and started doing more and made my way up into HPD2 by the end of the year and you know happily ever after, right? Mm, not so much. So in the winter between, um, after, after I discovered track, tracking the car and everything, um, I was driving around and all of a sudden the engine stopped running. The car wouldn't start. And immediately towed it back to EFI and on closer inspection, one of the injectors, which at the time the brand had had some issues, so the injector had uh, locked open and hydrolocked the engine, which basically destroyed a not even year old built engine, and I was crushed. I had just spent so much energy trying to get this thing running, and I just discovered what I wanted to do with it. This was, I knew, I knew what I wanted to do. So I took a little while. Did I want to sell it? Did I want to just part it out? Did I want to try to fix it? Did I, you know, I didn't know what I wanted to do with it because I wanted to drive. It didn't matter what, what I had. So I essentially settled for buying a completely stock engine and turbo off the internet, you know, crate, deliver it, and just put it in, run it as is, and that turned out to be one of the best decisions I could have ever made because with less horsepower, I'd actually have to drive the car. So I started doing more and more HPDE. I worked my way up and was finally ready for competition school in 2013. So I signed up and managed to pass my comp school um, and got ready to do my first race on, on that Saturday. And I went out for qualifying and started chasing people, started going faster and I didn't know it at the time, but when I came in, I found out that I had qualified pole for my first ever race, and I was ecstatic. I don't even think my feet were touching the ground at that point. I was just, everyone was coming up to me and congratulating me. Super excited. Start of the race. I'm leading the race. I'm, you know, driving as hard as I could, and then made a miscalculation, and ended up sliding into a wall around 80 miles an hour. 
So, the first thought in my head was, you idiot, what, why'd you do that? You were leading the race, why'd you crash? Um, it wasn't, you know, anything else. And then the next thought was, okay, what do I have to do to fix it? And got the car into the paddock, um, had a lot of help, you know, loading it onto the trailer. And for the four hour drive home, I just spent it on the, on the phone with sponsors, letting them know what happened and, you know, what was on deck and a bunch of body shops and friends with spare parts. And in about a month and a half, the car went from completely wrecked to frame straightened, um, to roadworthy, and then finally Applied Graphics, who had been um, paddocked next to me, offered me a vinyl sponsorship that um, would let me get the car looking like it, like a good race car again, um, so I wouldn't have to worry about painting it and got that going and came back, um, only missed one uh, event and managed to win the uh, Time Attack and Wheel to Wheel Championships for the Northeast that year. And that was really cool. And then I did it the next year and the year after that. And then I constantly challenged myself to do more. You know, I branched into autocross, I branched into rallycross, endurance racing, basically anything with four tires and a gas pedal is something that I enjoy doing. It doesn't matter how fast it is, it's just a lot of fun and that's what I like doing and I like sharing it with people and everyone, you know, from all walks of life. So, I think my uh, load of laundry is done, and I'm gonna finish uh, packing up, and then uh, I hope you guys will join me for the rest of the adventure, because we're flying out to Sebring tomorrow. Bye!